I'm Steve Zack. I'm a conservation scientist for the Wildlife Conservation Society. I currently work in the North America program. The tundra of Arctic Alaska is composed mostly of sedges and other small plants that are but a few inches high. There is no woody vegetation on that landscape that's taller than a couple of inches. And the first impression would be that it's a big, flat, empty place. Until you begin walking there and you find this bird nest, you find that bird nest. Birds are literally coming from every continent, every ocean to breed in the Arctic. And then there's a fox walking here and here comes the caribou herds. And all of a sudden, you're in a very lively place. On the opposite side of the spectrum, energy development is really set to expand dramatically, both on the land and in the oceans. The oil fields that are currently in Prudhoe Bay are our biggest energy infrastructure in the country. You have these huge gravel landscapes that house the buildings, house the roads, support the power lines, and so forth. And so there's the actual direct effects of habitat loss for birds that we need to consider. Secondly, in the Arctic, because of the development, certain animals like ravens, gulls, and Arctic fox have increased in number because of energy development. Ravens would not even be there were not there the opportunity to nest on tops of tall towers and buildings. The fox are there largely because there's a lot of garbage and because the structures provide places for them to den their young. So we as a Wildlife Conservation Society engaged in a study with many sites near and distant from oil development to examine that very issue. We arrive at the end of May and the snow is really melting away dramatically and the birds have already flooded into the place. And our first charge is to go to our plots where we find nests of birds. Once we find nests, we do a very strange thing. We will take the eggs of a nest, put them into a column of water, and see where that egg floats and how it's floating in the column because our research has shown that eggs that are just laid will be at the bottom of the water column. Eggs that are about to hatch are at the top. What we found was actually a fairly complicated picture. Songbirds near the oil fields suffer greater predation than those same songbirds further from there. There was no such overall picture for our shorebirds up there. We think in large part that's because the Arctic is such a wildly variable place from site to site, from year to year, and in this highly variable place it was very hard to understand the effect of energy development on top of that natural variation. So we have a somewhat nuanced picture of the effects of energy development on wildlife. These predators, ravens, gulls, fox, they're native species. They're species we should also be concerned about. And that their numbers are increasing with energy development in turn have an effect on the breeding birds, this creates an interesting challenge for us. I think what we can do is work with industry to help mitigate those effects, not by shooting the fox or the ravens, but by reducing the access to garbage, reducing the key structures that may encourage Arctic fox to nest there in the energy development, or in encourage ravens to nest there on the structures of energy development. If we can do little things like that, those might have large influences. We all use the energy that we get from the Arctic, but it shouldn't be at the cost of wildlife, and it doesn't need to be at the cost of wildlife. The Arctic is an immense place, and so there is really a lot of room for both energy development and wildlife protection, and as energy development moves toward western Arctic Alaska, we want to secure real protection for the wildlife and find a balance that I think we can achieve on this important public land.